Well, Isopod fans, I'm sitting here watching episode four of the Isopod vlog, and I'm trying to come up with an idea for the fifth episode, and I'm really struggling with this. This is a Porcelio Ornatus High Yellow. Take a look at those colors. Just unbelievable. Little bumblebees. These are so beautiful, I decided to use this uh, isopod as an example for our new uh, YouTube image. Love the high yellows and uh, the contrasting dark colors on the, these uh, little isopods. That's it. I've got it. I haven't really told you why you should be keeping isopods. So let's dig into that. The first thing that we're going to cover is what is an isopod? I don't know if you were like me as a kid. I was very adventurous. I'd go down to the local stream, look around the banks for different uh, animals, uh, overturn rocks and logs. And if I were to overturn a log, those little roly polies, that, that's what we used to call them, uh, little pill bugs, those are isopods. So isopods are crustaceans, they're not insects. And they actually breathe through a set of gills instead of through their mouth. Being a reptile keeper now, the first introduction to isopods I really had a few years ago was through bioactive uh, vivarium setups. These isopods are known as the cleanup crew. They'll go around the bottom of the tank eating any dying uh, plant matter or any waste material. So this is actually the first reason why you should keep isopods. If you're considering setting up a bioactive or naturalistic enclosure, the first thing that you should think about is the substrate and making that substrate active by adding isopods. Another function that these isopods have is that they burrow into the substrate and mix up that substrate. As I only have a couple of basic setups that utilize uh, isopods for a bioactive substrate, let's take a look at a couple of uh, YouTubers that really do a great job with this. The first one that we'll take a look at is Russ Wilson from Aquaramax. And now it's time for the microfauna. I'm going to put some springtails in there. Let's see if I can get this to focus on the springtails. You can see some of them running around. Okay. We're going to toss some of those in there. And the second one we'll look at is Mike Tatula. He does a great job with dark frogs and really explains this process well. The isopods. Now these are the roly polies, the pill bugs, the whatever synonym you have for them. That's what they are. They're an invertebrate and they will clean your vivarium. So these are coined the janitors of the vivarium. These guys will be eating mostly waste, uh, breaking down organic matter. For reason number two, I was thinking about this the other day, why I keep isopods. This last fall, I really went through a, a tough period where the geckos weren't breeding. Uh, they were conditioning. They were cooling down. And I was fortunate enough to, to obtain a few uh, cultures of isopods. These cultures consisted of some fairly easy breeding isopods like the curlies here that we see. And as you can see, they really, really breed quickly. So while the geckos weren't breeding, while they were conditioning up and, and actually cooling down, I was actually able to get some manky or, or babies from the isopods. So it was an, almost an instant gratification kind of thing for me while I was waiting for the geckos. Another really cool thing about isopods is their genetics. If you go on any online site and take a look at their availability list, you'll see all kinds of variabilities in some of these isopods. From albinos, to oranges, to super oranges, to orange vigors, to giant oranges, to Dalmatians, to zebras, to clowns, to... It's an incredible variant of colors for these isopods. And I really think as this hobby explodes this last couple of years and in the next couple of years, we're really going to see some fascinating colors with these isopods. As I mentioned before, these isopods, some of these isopods really take off and breed quickly. And that leads us to our next reason to keep isopods, and that's to feed your animals. While I haven't done this personally, here's a video of a bearded dragon eating an isopod. I know that's pretty graphic, but there might be some benefit in feeding your animals isopods. Again, we haven't done it at Supreme Gecko, but we'll certainly try this in the future. Here's another reason to keep isopods. Last fall and before it became winter here in Wisconsin, I was fortunate enough, after I started keeping some of these isopods, 
to develop my interest in the animals, and I actually went out herping around our city. It actually brought my wife and myself together a little bit more. We went around uh, different areas, uh, around rivers, and collected uh, wood and leaves and actually isopods and, and millipedes as well. I set these isopods and millipedes up in little containers, uh, again, in the fall. And now that we're in the spring and early summer now, those isopods have multiplied as well as the millipedes. So it's a great learning experience, but also getting out and investigating your local areas. When you were a kid, did you have a Dow collection or a baseball card collection or a beer can collection? I know I had boxes and boxes of beer cans. I would go around the local areas as a kid and collect beer cans. It was just a matter of having every single one of a certain type, different uh, brands, uh, flat tops, and so on. Baseball cards, uh, I wanted to complete a whole year set uh, or collect all of the different sets for one individual player. So what I'm finding for myself is one of the main reasons for keeping these isopods is more of a collection kind of thing. I really like to see the different types of animals, the different species, the different morphs, and I like to see if I can actually breed these animals here in, in our facility. I think one of the most exciting things for me is to introduce somebody to isopods and get that look of why, why would I want to keep isopods and have them go off a couple of weeks later, do some research and come back and tell me, oh my gosh, there's so many different varieties of these isopods. It's so exciting. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these isopods now. Isn't that an incredible list? Some of these isopods are just phenomenal in their colors and shapes and sizes. Now, having said that, some of the isopods are easy to breed and they're fast breeders, while other isopods are a little bit more difficult, difficult to keep, and certainly more difficult to breed. And that leads us to another reason to keep these isopods. With this hobby growing so quickly, it's super hot right now, the prices of isopods are varying all over the place, but it's a phenomenal hobby, and there's a great opportunity to purchase some very unique isopods and also to sell these isopods. Again, there's some species of isopods that are going for 50 cents to a dollar a piece, or even less, all the way up to 25 to 30 dollars a piece. It's just incredible. If you would have told me this five or six years ago that I might be buying isopods for 10, 15, 20, 25 dollars a piece, I would have thought that you were nuts. So to, to quickly reiterate, there's a lot of reasons to keep isopods. Probably the best known is to introduce isopods into a vivarium to make it a bioactive enclosure for your animals. Another reason is to get that instant gratification to see these animals reproducing in, in your home. And with them reproducing so quickly, to see all of the genetics that are happening with these isopods. There's also a possibility that you can use these isopods for feeding your animals. Keeping isopods also introduces a new aspect into your reptile keeping, and that's getting out into nature and doing some herping. Some people might look at keeping isopods as kind of a collection thing. And finally, there's certainly a business end of this, and, and that's seeing the sales of these isopods taking off so quickly here in the last few years and being such a hot market right now. If you have another reason to keep isopods that you can think of, or another reason that you keep isopods, make sure that you add that as a comment below. The final point that I want to leave you with today is that isopods, keeping the different species of isopods, can really vary. I highly suggest to you to go to a couple of websites, and I'll list them in the description below, where you can get more information on the different species of isopods and how to keep them. So make sure you really do your research on these, these animals. Thank you for watching today, isopod keepers, or future isopod keepers. If you like this information, go ahead and hit that like button, and subscribe if you haven't already.